People will often ask me, hey, Jared, what telescope should I get? And that's really quite a loaded question because there's no easy or definitive answer for which telescope you should get. But if a closer view of the heavens is something that you seek, then lend me your ears because this is the series of space pods that you have been waiting for. This is your space pod for May 8, 2015. Thus begins a four-part series of space pods about which telescope you should get. Now, consider most of this opinion. You don't actually have to listen to me, because this is based off of my experience. It's different for everybody, depending upon what you want to do. For our first three space pods, we'll be focusing even more on those three different types of telescopes. Refractors, reflectors, and catadioptric telescopes. For this first one, we're going to look at the OG telescopes, refractors. When it comes to the history of the telescope, the refractor is Genesis. Now, many people often cite famous Italian astronomer Galileo Galilei as the father of the telescope, but that distinction actually goes to three Dutchmen, Hans Lippersche, Zacharias Janssen, and Jacob Midas. All three were involved in the development of what was the first telescope in recorded history in the Netherlands in 1608. From the 1610s to the middle of the 1800s, the refractor telescope was the standard telescope for astronomical study. Now the design is actually very simple. You have an objective at the front of your telescope. This is the lens that refracts the light. Then you have a portion at the back of your telescope where you put your eyepiece at. Now, in between that, you have a focus system, and from that, you are able to see into the universe. Refractors can only be of a certain size because of the physical limitations of glass itself. The bigger the telescope, the bigger the lens. And that means even more weight, as all that glass has to be used to refract the light. At a certain point, gravity will literally pull the lens so much that it will begin to warp under its own weight. And the largest refractor ever consistently used was the 40-inch at Yerkes Observatory. Modern refractors can be inexpensive, and they provide fantastically sharp images. That's because there's nothing blocking your view from the objective to your eyes behind the eyepiece. Modern refractors can also have two, even up to three, glass lenses, and they serve to enhance the clarity of the views. But because of the physical limitations of just how big a lens can be, refractors are considered less than ideal for the task of gathering light to see deep sky objects. Glass is also quite heavy and can get expensive in a hurry. Refractors make for an excellent first telescope by which to introduce yourself to the universe with. Now, refractors, they're very good for planetary viewing and the moon. So in a place like where I live in Los Angeles, where there is a very large amount of light pollution, refractors are quite ideal for the views that we'll be able to get. If you want to see deep sky objects, though, you may want to stay tuned for next week when we talk about reflectors. You can go deep sky with a refractor, but it is extremely difficult to get good imagery with a refractor. Thanks for watching this space pod. I'm Jared Head. Don't forget to comment on social media, subscribe, and donate to our Patreon campaign. So, I'll see you next week, and keep exploring.